Today, I'm gonna to show you guys how to set up your own home studio step by step. You're going to learn what equipment you need if you're a producer, singer, or songwriter, the best options for your budget, and how to get everything up and running so you can start creating great music today. If you guys are interested in any of the gear I've mentioned in this video, there will be a list of links for all the products down below. But without further ado, let's get straight into the video. So the first thing you're going to need to set up your own home studio is a computer to run all of your music production software. Now whether you want a laptop, desktop, Mac, or PC is entirely up to you. But the key thing to think about here is functionality. If you're a producer or artist, who's planning to cook up or record at home or on the go, then a laptop may be best suited for your needs. But if you don't have any plans to make your setup mobile, then a desktop might be just right for you. Now, whichever you choose, the minimum computer specs I recommend you have is a computer with an Intel i7 CPU or higher, a minimum of eight gigabytes of RAM, and at least 500 gigabytes of internal storage if you could get that. The minimum requirements for most music production softwares is an Intel i5, but I would go for a computer with slightly more processing power because it will just lag less and prevent crashes when you're making music. But if you do get the absolute bare minimum specs, just be aware that you may need to upgrade your computer down the line, which means spending twice the amount of money than if you were to buy one strong computer in the first place. If you have a tighter budget, then PC will be the better option for you because you can get slightly more for a better price. Here are some of the options I found for budget laptops. For the best performance, I recommend you go for computers that have an Intel i9 CPU or higher. 16, 32, or 64 gigabytes of RAM is also recommended, but if you can, go for something like 32 or 64 gigabytes of RAM, just so you can have your computer longer so you don't have the need to upgrade down the line sooner. And then also, at least have one terabyte of internal SSD storage so you can save all your files when making music. But if you want an even crazier setup, feel free to go as high as you want. Here's a list of the higher end computers I would recommend. Again, if you can, put a little bit more money into your computer because it will save you more money in the long run. Now that you've got your computer, the second thing you're going to need is a music production software, also known as a digital audio workstation or DAW for short. This is where you're going to create all of your music. When choosing your DAW, you wanna make sure you have an idea on what you plan on doing when creating music because certain DAWs specialize in certain things. If producing is more of your main focus, then you may wanna go with something like FL Studio or Ableton Live. These two who are very popular for producing, but you could also engineer on these as well. If you don't care for producing and you want to focus more on recording and engineering, then you can go with something like Pro Tools, Logic, Studio One, Cubase, or Reaper. Keep in mind, you can still make beats with these softwares, but FL Studio and Ableton are just the most popular and easiest to get into for producing. Most of these softwares could be pretty expensive to start off with, but they offer entry-level versions for each software, which makes it easier to get into. And if you need more of the additional features, you could then upgrade from there. Once you have your computer and DAW of choice installed, then you can go ahead and start producing some music. You don't really need any other gear besides that to start learning how to produce music, but if you want to record your voice or an instrument such as a guitar, or maybe even plug in some studio monitors to make the music production process more enjoyable, then you're going to need an audio interface. An audio interface is the centerpiece of your studio that will allow you to connect microphones, instruments, headphones, studio monitors, and other pieces of gear you may need for your studio. Audio interfaces have many different functions, shapes, sizes, and price points, so choosing the right one for you really depends on your needs. The best audio interfaces for beginners are typically going to be USB connected audio interfaces. After you pick an interface you like, all you have to do is connect it to your computer, download the sound drivers for your specific audio interface, then select the interface as your primary sound source and you're ready to go. If you're on a budget or just want to plug in one microphone, one instrument, or one pair of studio monitors, then here are some of the budget audio interface options I recommend for you to explore. But the higher up you go with audio interfaces, the more inputs and outputs you will generally get. And the overall quality of everything else seems to improve, such as the microphone preamps, the analog to digital, digital to analog converters, the headphone amps, and you will also have access to additional DSP processing for certain interfaces where you will be able to run your signal through digital plugins and effects all with zero latency. Here are some of the higher end interface options that I would recommend for you to explore. Now that we have all the audio interfaces covered, the next essential piece of gear that absolutely every studio needs to have is a great microphone. Microphones can record tons of different sources, but the most popular and what I'm sure most people are curious about is which mics are best for vocals. Now, if you plan on recording vocals, I would recommend you go for something such as a condenser microphone. A condenser microphone is a wide frequency, high sensitivity microphone that is capable of capturing extremely detailed recordings. In order to use your condenser microphone, you will need an XLR 
DLR mic cable to connect it into your preamp or interface and 48 volts of phantom power in order to hear any signal coming through, which all of the interfaces I mentioned previously have. Since there are so many great microphones at so many different price points, I decided to split these into three different categories, the budget tier, the mid tier, and the S tier. Starting off with the budget tier, we have the AKG P220, the Audio-Technica AT2035, the Rode NT1A, and the Ashton Origin. For the mid-tier microphones, we have the AKG C414, the Neumann TLM103, the Neumann TLM107, and the Lawton Audio Atlantis. And for the S-tier microphones, we have the Manly Reference Cardioid, the Neumann U87, the Lawton Audio Eden, the Sony C800G, and the Telefunken 251. Now, keep in mind that you absolutely do not need to spend $12,000 plus on a microphone just to get good sounding vocals. Although it is very nice to have, you could still achieve great vocal mixes even with the budget microphones. When I first started my home studio, the first mic I used was the Audio-Technica AT2035 and that one did me great for years. I still use it to this day. Eventually, I upgraded right to the U87 after and this mic is great as well. But having a proper treated room and the expertise to process your vocals will get you much further than just throwing $12,000 at a wall and expecting everything to sound good. So after you select your microphone, you're also going to need a microphone stand, which I will just leave a few down in the description below. But now that we've got a basic studio setup going and you started to make some music, you may realize that it's a little bit difficult to get everything to sound professional, such as beats that knock or having a song with your vocals and instrumentals sound polished and finished. If you're having these issues, then click the link below to submit a form and get your music mixed and mastered by a professional engineer today. Now back into the video. The next piece of gear that is also essential for every studio to have is some good quality headphones. Now if you're a producer or a singer songwriter, a good pair of headphones is essential to have because if you can't afford studio monitors or if you are in a space that you can't play your music too loud, then these will allow you to hear great quality audio when creating music. When choosing your headphones, you have two specific options that you're able to choose from, open back and closed back. Like the name implies, open back headphones have an open back which allows sound to escape inward and outward when you're playing music, which when in use typically has a more natural open sound. Because of the more accurate soundscape, these headphones are more preferred by audio engineers who do a lot of critical listening work with mixing and mastering. But since these are open backed, they are not a good pair of headphones to have when recording because you will have the sound of the music leaking out of the headphones into the microphone which could cause feedback or headphone bleed. On the other hand, we have closed back headphones. Since these headphones have a closed back, they prevent sounds from going into the headphones or escaping out of the headphones. This makes these headphones perfect for recording artists because it prevents headphone bleed and feedback allowing you to get cleaner quality recordings. Since these headphones have a sealed ear cup, they also produce a more powerful and impactful bass response which could be desirable for some artists and producers. Here's a list of some of the budget open back and closed back headphones that I would recommend. Here's a list of some of the higher quality open and closed back headphones that I would recommend. Now all of the gear I've covered so far in this video are some great must-haves for your home studio setup, but this next tool I'm going to cover is arguably the most important part of any studio. And if possible, I would recommend you get this right as quickly as you can. Without this, you will have a much harder time getting your beats and mixes to sound right. Without this, you will have much worse sounding recordings. Without this, you'll be fighting against yourself, making it that much harder for you to create great records, leading to more anger and frustration overall. What is this next tool that I'm talking about? Well, it's acoustic treatment. Acoustic treatment is crucial for your studio setup for multiple reasons. It can control and minimize reflections and reverberations within your studio space, making sure that what you're hearing out of your speakers are sounds that accurately represent the sounds that are being produced. This means that without good acoustic treatment, you will get an inaccurate sound that can deceive your perception of the mix, leading to poor decisions during the producing, mixing, or mastering process. On the recording side, without proper acoustic treatment, you will be capturing all the nasty tones and reverb within your room that will be much harder to remove when mixing. If you're on a budget, then you can start off with acoustic foam to hang up and treat your room, but just keep a note that this is only a temporary fix because the issue with acoustic foam is that it doesn't properly absorb all the frequencies within the frequency spectrum. Typically, when treating your rooms with foam, you will only be absorbing the high frequency information, which will have your vocals sounding very boxy and dull, which takes a lot more time and effort to 
to fix it within the mix. Your vocals end up sounding like this. And when producing, you will be missing out on a lot of clarity, throwing off the overall balance of your beat. But if you're on a budget and you must go with foam, I would recommend you get at least three and a half inch thick panels because the thicker the better. If you only use one inch thick foam, you're basically not even treating your room, but still some treatment is better than none. Now, if you have a little bit more of a budget to spend and you're serious about having a nice home studio setup, the panels that I would recommend you get is fiberglass or rock wool panels. These materials are much better because they absorb more frequencies within the frequency spectrum and will have you dialing in your mixes and beats much much faster along with getting better sounding vocals overall when recording again the thicker the panels the better i would recommend if possible to get four to six inch thick panels because those will give you the best sound but if you're in a smaller room two inch to three and a half inch panels should do if you want to save some money then you can build the panels yourself but depending on your carpentry skills that will determine if the time it takes for you to make the panels is worth it or not but if you want to save time and just buy panels online then again you can check for some in the description below now that we've got our panel set up and the studio treated properly the next thing that you're going to want for your home studio is a good pair of studio monitors studio monitors help you by providing a flat frequency response when listening which helps you achieve a better balanced mix unlike headphones studio monitors also provide a better sense of stereo imaging and depth that will get you better quality results quicker these monitors will also allow you to hear what your songs sound like out loud which will give you a better perspective on how your beats or mixes translate from different playback systems when shopping for speakers, driver size matters. For this reason, I recommend you get speakers with at least an 8 inch driver so that way you could hear lower within your frequency spectrum without missing out what's going on so that way you could hear your low end frequencies better without guessing what's going on down there. But the bigger the driver, the more space the speakers take up and the more expensive they get. So if you're on a budget and you can only afford smaller speakers with a smaller driver, then these are some of the speakers I would recommend. But if you have a little bit more money to invest, then I would recommend you go for a pair of speakers like these. To plug in your speakers, all you have to do is make sure you have two outlets open so that way you could plug in your speakers to give them power and then have a TRS to XLR cable so that way you could plug the output of your interface into the input of your speakers on the back so that way you're able to hear sound. So that concludes everything on how to set up your own home studio setup. Whether you're a singer, songwriter, or producer, this will get you up and running with your own home studio setup in no time. And now that you have your studio set up and you want to learn how to engineer better yourself, then don't forget to check out our Pro Tools recording course where you will get a step-by-step -step process showing you how to elevate the quality of your music through engineering. And if you want to get better at mixing vocals, you won't properly be able to do so until you learn these simple techniques on how to get a killer vocal mix. So click this video right here to learn how to mix your vocals the right way. I'll see you guys there. Peace.